This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. With the midterm elections three weeks away, a new report warns candidates and elected officials not to use inflammatory rhetoric that contributes to hate-fueled attacks. The group Stop Asian Americans and Pacifica, uh, Pacific Islanders Hate, or Stop AAPI Hate, documents a trend of reported hate incidents on Asian Americans when politicians use inflammatory language, like blaming China for the COVID-19 pandemic, the economic downturn and national security concerns. The report, called The Blame Game, finds more than 20 percent of Americans believe Asian Americans are at least partly responsible for COVID. This is nearly double from last year. On Monday, PBS explored the issue in a new documentary called Rising Against Asian Hate One Day in March. Breaking tonight, people shot and ate killed. At massage parlors. That was my mother. In Fulton County, all the victims are Asian American women. What do you do about hate crime? During a time where Asian Americans were being targeted. Maybe that's a question you should ask China. It was an example of what racism towards Asians could lead to. Our goal is to make sure people don't think that our community is invisible anymore. Rising Against Asian Hate focuses in part on the March 2021 attack, in which eight people were shot and killed by a gunman targeting Asian-owned spas in Atlanta. Six of the people killed were women of Asian descent. The film features Robert Peterson, son of the late Young Ayu, who was one of eight people killed. That was when I started to do my hunt and search for my mother. I remember calling the sheriff's office, trying to identify the women. I don't think some of them believed that it was my mother when I was calling. They were like, yeah, these are Asian women. And I'm like, yes, my mother's Asian. My brother called me to get an update. Have I heard anything? What's going on? At that moment, I had just gotten off the phone with the medical examiner. and. Uh, she told me that, yes, they did have a body downtown of a woman named Young Yu. That was my mother. Go back to whatever Asian country you belong in. Take your in China food and shove it up your Okay, well done. Oh, you Taiwanese chink, mother sir. Violence and bias against our community is, is nothing new. It becomes inflamed uh, whenever there's something that Americans don't like about Asia. So whether it's World War II and Pearl Harbor, or whether it's increased competition from Japan during the 80s, or whether it's 9-11, Americans are suffering, and they feel pain and fear, and I think it's acutely manifesting in the symptom of Asian hate. That's a clip from Rising Against Asian Hate, which premiered Monday on PBS. The film also explores what some say are difficulties in documenting hate crimes against Asian Americans. Atlanta revealed that prosecuting hate crimes aimed at Asian Americans presents unique challenges compared to other targeted groups. We had a lot of instances where there were nooses found in the workplace. We know what that means. It was geared towards intimidating black workers. In the Jewish community, there is the Nazi symbol. But towards Asian American community, we don't have one symbol or multiple symbols that, that really solidify the ideology against Asian Americans. So it makes it a little bit tougher, so you have to really look and dig to find um, evidence of that motive. For more, we're joined by Gina Kim, executive producer of the new documentary Rising Against Asian Hate One Day in March, part of the PBS, PBS initiative called Exploring Hate. Gina, welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about the significance of this film coming out now as the political rhetoric escalates leading into the midterm elections in three weeks. Thank you, Amy. Um, I think it's important for us to remember, at the height of the pandemic, scrolling through our phones and just seeing one horrific attack after another, um, elderly Asian Americans being brutalized, innocent women being, you know, attacked um, senselessly. And, you know, we felt that it was, you know, it, the, the 
hate crimes against Asian Americans increased by over 300 percent in those two years. And, and as we are entering the midterms, I think a lot of people have sort of forgotten that this issue um, is one of the most pressing issues in this country. I mean, when hate crimes, when, when crimes against Asian Americans are increasing by over 300 percent, that is startling. That is, that is shocking. And so we felt that we had to document this moment and make sure that, you know, that people recognize that this is an issue that we need to confront as a nation. Well, and you know, your your film talks about some of the uh, recent examples and going back to uh, the uh, anti-Japanese hysteria during World War II, but even further back, I mean, most Americans are not aware uh, that the first really racist immigration law, the Chinese Exclusion Act, happened in the 1880s, and that there were even uh, massacres of the Ch Chinese Americans, like Rock Springs. Uh, could you talk about some of that history that uh, most of us uh, when, have not been taught in school? Well, I have to say, I wasn't taught that in school. I grew up in a, t a small town outside of Philadelphia, and I didn't know that history. I mean, I've learned it through the years, but the 1882 Asian American Exclusion Act, um, Asian Exclusion Act, I mean, you know, um, Chinese uh, people from China were not allowed to be citizens of this country until 1947, I believe. I mean, that's recent. That's not long, you know, long, a long time in our history. Um, these are the things that were not being taught in our schools. You know, I learned about Vincent Chin as an adult when people were, you know, uh, blaming the Japanese for taking auto worker jobs. Um, I learned about, you know, um, the internment camps later in life. And so this is an issue with this country that we don't want our history. And so that's why it was important for us to document this film um, for the future generation, for my son's generation. Um, we, you know, we see that that's changing and more and more stories are being heard. But, you know, without, you know, creating these stories and telling our stories, history will be repeated. Uh, we will make these mistakes again. And so we want to make sure that we brought this to, to, to you know, people's attention and brought this to light. Uh, Gina, the film is narrated by Sandra O. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, take us back to that day in March when eight people were killed. Um, was it six of them women, seven of them Asian American? Even then, the Atlanta police were saying this is not a hate crime. Ultimately, uh, one of them was thrown out, I think, the press spokesperson, because he was seen on social media wearing an anti Asian t shirt. But Talk about what happened and how this now very well-known massacre um, actually unfolded. You know, as I was mentioning before, we were seeing the ramping of the rhetoric, you know, calling the pandemic China virus and Kung flu, and we're seeing these attacks one after another on our social media feeds and seeing it in the news. And so when March 16th happened, I don't think a lot of people were necessarily surprised. I mean, absolutely devastated, of course, but not necessarily surprised. We sort of saw it coming. Um, and the and the perpetrator, the, the person who killed these eight people, including six women of Asian descent, said that it was because of his sexual addiction. Well, you know, when he went to the first spa and killed the four four people, brutally murdered four people, he then drove 45 minutes to the next two spots where he killed additional four people. Um, and he passed many different, you know, spas and bars and other, other um, businesses, and he targeted Asian-owned businesses, and he targeted Asian women. I mean, as we know, the stereotypes of Asian-American women in this country, it's, it's you know, it's, it's troubling. You know, women, Asian women are often thought of as hypersexualized or demure, submissive. And so the fact that he targeted Asian women, I mean, there's no doubt that the intersection of race and gender is, um, you know, is there. Um, and, and it was, you know, troubling that, that I think the Asian American community was very troubled that the police immediately dismissed it, said it was not a hate crime, that you're right, the spokesperson for Cherokee County, the sheriff, um, you know, said that the that Robert Long, um, the shooter, was having a bad day, um, and then later he posted um, and you know China, COVID, China virus T-shirts on his on his Facebook page. Um, so it was, you know, for a lot of Asian Americans, they remember that day. It, it is very remarkable how many people remember where they were that day when they heard about those um, eight people who were killed, including the women, six women of Asian descent.
And I'm wondering your thoughts also. There have been many of uh, uh, video uh, videotaped incidents of individual violence against uh, uh, Asian Americans uh, in, the, in the past few years. And it's also not just uh, white Americans, but many black and Latino youth uh, coming from communities who themselves were discriminated against, yet they are also uh, at times participating in this kind of violence. Your thought about this uh, issue of a uh, uh, of uh, attacks coming uh, uh, at times from the uh, from members of the black or Latino community as well. It's a complicated issue. I think there, you know, as you know, there have been um, a history of you know um, of mistrust between you know black and Asian communities, and I think that's changing. What we found in our film is that there's been a lot of solidarity, a lot of um, coming together the communities to say you know that this is not acceptable and we can't we can't we can't um, let this go on. I mean, it's it's a, it's it's complicated, and you know we didn't have an opportunity this hour film to go into it. But yes, you're right. I mean, not all the attacks are perpetrated by white people, but you know when you have when when we talked about um, when you talked about the report earlier from the um, Stop AAPI Hate um, group that said that, you know, perpetrators of Asian, you know, hate incidents are repeating the the rhetoric of politicians when when they're attacking people and calling, you know, and, and yelling out Kung Flu and COVID um, China virus and and blaming China for the economic issues this country is facing and also the, um, you know, the security concerns, the national security concerns. I mean, that it translates, it tra trickles down, down. Words matter. Words have consequences and they're often dangerous. And um, and so and so we, you know, um, do you feel that with bringing this to light and to bring to talk about it and to have black and brown and Asian communities come together and, you know, and, and discuss these issue is one step in, in, in helping to stop what's happening?